Hi guys, so today I am going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to make a complete HTML web page. There's going to be no styling, so no CSS, no JavaScript, nothing other than HTML. So this is the site that we're aiming to build today. It's using various different HTML features, including the H tags, paragraph, a list, links, image, a form, a button, and a footer. So if you guys are interested, then keep watching. Now, I'm using Notepad++ purely because I find it a lot more visually easier to use because it colour coordinates and it's easier to spot errors. If you guys are using iOS or Mac, then Notepad++ isn't available, but there are alternative solutions, Xcode, etc. Notepad++ is free to download, so I highly recommend going out and checking it out. If not, then you can purely just use a notepad, for example, and just start typing away your code in there. But be sure to save it as a .html page. So the first thing you're going to want to do in Notepad++ is set up the language by clicking language and H for HTML. Then you're going to want to set up the HTML type here. So of course we're doing HTML, so HTML at the top. And then this will be the end of the complete page. And you notice I use a forward slash and you use that to close any tag. You need to make sure you close all your tags in HTML, otherwise you are likely to get an error. So let's go ahead. So the first thing that you have is a header, or a head in this case. Now in the head section of a HTML page, it's completely to put your scripts in. So any JavaScript goes in the head because it loads before any of the body does. And you also put links to your style sheets of so your CSS and things like that. And you also include a title. Now, for ours, we're just doing a demonstration shop. So we're going to call it shopping store. It can be anything relevant. And then we're going to go ahead and save as and save this in a folder suitable. Now, let me just delete these two in this folder here. And then do file. Save as, and you're going to want to call it something like index.html or home.html because this is our home page and we need to make sure we save type as HTML. And we go ahead and click save. Now, if we run this in Google Chrome, you get a blank page, and you're probably thinking, what? But the head is not displayed to the public eye. So the title here, shopping store, we typed in, it's displayed here. But there's no content because we haven't made a body. So if we go ahead now and we do body and we open up the body tag. Now anything inside this will be displayed in that huge white space area. So I'm going to go ahead and do H1 and give you guys an example. So I'm going to say welcome and save it and run. And now we've got this. So the H tag stands for heading. And there's five of them in HTML, so H2, H3, H4, and H5. H1 is the most standout, it's the biggest in size, and H5 is the smallest and the lowest standout, should I say. Um, you can use them in any order, but you can't really do it so we want to use a H5 here or h3 even and then use a h1 you need to sort of put them in that order even if you leave them blank and um, so i'm just going to go ahead and type in some information just to give you guys an idea of um the shoes you need just give you an idea of the size for each of the h tags um shop now this is literally just anything follow us and enjoy and I'll save it again and run. You always have to save it in Notepad++ before you can run it. So there we go. So H1, H2, H3, H4, and H5. And it's quite easy to tell the difference in size. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a paragraph. So typically you use these for your headings. And then any content information that you want to write about, you put it in a paragraph. So um, 
pick out the shoes you want and be sure to order them now to get them delivered in time and I'll save that and I'll run that as well just to give you guys an idea so you notice that it's slightly different because all the headers are in a bit of a bold font and then the paragraph is just in plain text now when we go to do styling you can style them to however you want you can do them in bold italic etc but for now we're purely sticking to HTML so I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can now add an image and do image src and then quotes and alt equals and quotes and close that off there like that because you don't need a backslash image or img. Now src stands for the location basically of where your image is. So I already downloaded one earlier called shoes.jpg and you need to make sure that the file type is a JPEG by going to the properties and checking out the type of file. So you go ahead and you type in shoes.jpg or whatever yours is called. It needs to be the exact spelling so if you use an uppercase S it needs to be an uppercase S and then alt stands for alternative text and this is really good to use if you're website will be targeting anyone who may be visually impaired or somebody's web browser who doesn't always load as quickly and smoothly and the image won't display then they get the alternative text so it's just to describe the image so a black Nike trainer shoe trainer shoe I know they're the same thing you know just leave it fine and ta-da now you're probably thinking wow that's a big image now, in HTML, you can either do this in HTML or in CSS. It does not matter for the image. You need to check your height and width. Now, this is already pretty big. I assume this is around 500 to 500. But in here, you can do width equals and height equals. Now, if I type in 500 and 500, which is the exact size of what my image is at the moment, it stays the same size to what it was just there and so the only way to shorten the size down is to the correct way is to go and open this image up either in Photoshop or something and decrease the size or you can forcefully shorten the size in the HTML but it can scale wrongly now 500 is a nice rounded number 250 is half of 500 so it just shrinks it in a half size both ways however if i was to do say 300 against 500 and run it it's going to probably scale to go horribly ta-da that one's quite a nice scale that one's a bit stretched and ugly you need to make sure you're scaling correctly so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do the list for you guys. So you start off a list by doing a UL tag and make sure you close it. And then you use LI for list. Um, we'll just do two because you guys get the idea. You can do as many as you want but these are the bullet points. So you just continuously paste however many you want. So we might have home and we might have shoes. And I'll save them and we'll run and you get bullet points. Now if you wanted to turn these into links, which is the way that most people make a navigation bar, you know, like your main navigation, your home, your shopping cart or wherever it is, or contact us page. Now you can create those like links from that navigation system using this here. You can style it in CSS, which we'll look at in the next video, but I'll just show you how you turn them into links. So here we open up a href equals and then we do home and then we close the a tag now here we need to put the link to the html page or whatever page you want to go to so for this instance we're going back to the home page which in our case is called index.html 
And here we will do href equals shoes .html. We will call it shoes and we will close the a tag. And just to show and give you guys another demonstration, I will quickly do another one that takes us to www.google.com. And we will type in Google. And we will save and we will run that in Chrome. So they're all in hyperlinks. You click home, nothing happens because we're already on the home page. You click shoes and it crashes because shoes.html does not exist. We go to Google and that doesn't work neither because the idea of it is that you're using this for your local, locally hosted sites. So if we get rid of this, oh, that clearly just did not work. We get rid of this and we make a new page called, we'll just, we'll just open it up in HTML really quickly. We'll just make one, we'll skip the header, we'll just do a body and we'll just do a H1 and we'll say shoes. And this is a great example to say why um, to use Notepad++ rather than anything else. Because if we go language and do H, HTML, it lights up. It also lights up when I saved it as a HTML file because it recognized the programming language. So if I go back now and I save this and we run it again. And we click shoes, we get taken to the new page. And that's the sort of way that you go along with that. So... Now we'll just do the form really quickly um, and we'll do the form so that it opens up in the new page that we just created and remember to close the form off. So we're going to do shoe size and then we want to do input type equals text and then we want to do name equals shoe size you can probably skip name and we will do shoe name and again it's pretty much just copy and paste job and name equals shoe name and save that so really quickly we're setting it to shoes.html because when we have our button set up that's where it will take us to the input type text gives us a text box uh, for us to input information into. Um, name equals shoe size is purely just giving the text box a ID. You could probably not even include them at this time, but it's nice to do so. And then the black text shoe size is what is displayed to the users or to the content page. So, ta-da! Shoe size, our input type text and our input type text and then our label there so if we do our button type so if we do input type equals submit and we do value equals submit and we close that off now type submit is a button and value equals submit means what you want to be placed inside the button so the text that's inside it so if you wanted it to say um, visit site or contact us then it will say that and if we do save and we do run and we launch this again then you see the value is the letters submit right there for us um, so I'll just jump straight back into it and I'll just quickly show you what I mean with the value here and um, we can say name and then in the text box it will now display name already there so that's it for the body pretty much we'll just go on to the first really quickly I don't want to take up too much time for people and we'll do a HR tag so the foot goes outside of the body because it's no longer part of the body but it doesn't go outside the HTML tag because that will be then the end of the document. So we create it on its own. 
HR is basically creating a line, so it's sort of drawing that line for our footer, and I quite like using that. It's just a nice feature to have, if I'm honest with you. And then I'm just going to use a paragraph tag, paragraph tag, and write copyright in there for you, and save that. And then we will just run it in Chrome. And so there we go. Paragraph tag for copyright and the HR there. So everything below this line will be the footer. So if you put loads in it, then it will continue to go down. Anything above the line is your body and then nothing in the header is displayed. I hope you guys found this video quite interesting and helpful. If you guys did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to leave a comment down below of any tutorials that you guys want. My next video will be adding CSS and giving this a bit more style and creative and flexi flexibility. So, yeah, please do let me know. I can do Android, .NET, Visual Studio, um, ASPX, Visual Basics, HTML, JavaScript, Python. Um, I don't know what else there is. But, yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and be sure to give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye.